Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleagues Jim Patterson and Paul Estabrooks. Jim and Paul will be today's presenters, and we'll discuss the topic of how to maintain visibility and decision making while empowering teams to use Azure DevOps to manage work. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Remember, if you'd like access to these slides or have any questions, feel free to reach out to contact at oneplan.ai and we'd be more than happy to assist you. Thank you again, and I'll now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thank you, Robert. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Uh, in our topic today, you know, Azure DevOps from Microsoft is a very popular platform for people to do uh, software development work as well as managing that work in an agile fashion. And uh, in that, it's got very strong capabilities to manage work within teams. But the question is, uh, how do we harness that to maintain visibility and decision support and decision making data uh, for our leadership? And our uh, webinar today is going to talk about uh, bringing those worlds together effectively into uh, one uh, view and one lens. So let's talk about, you know, one plan solutions. Uh, we're here to talk about this because this is our area of expertise. You know, we are consistently recognized as a leader in the area of project and portfolio management, as well as other gold certifications we have with Microsoft. But our particular focus in project and portfolio management has earned us the designation multiple times as Microsoft's global project and portfolio management partner of the year, uh, uh, as well as uh, this year, we were actually named a Power Apps and Power Automate finalist for Partner of the Year as well. Anything around project and portfolio management, whether it be traditional waterfall approaches or hybrids, or even folks looking at doing Scaled Agile, we are certified with Scaled Agile Inc. as a Scaled Agile partner. So we do have a lot of expertise, and a lot of customers and companies that we've run through this discipline and help them mature and grow in these areas. And we focus on not just the solutions, but people, process, and technology so that we uh, make sure that we do things to help people really truly achieve business agility transformation or at least take the next steps towards that uh, in their journeys. So enough about us. Let's talk about the topic at hand. You know, people are going through agile transformations these days. The world is trying to move into more agile approaches. And as we look at this, if we look at this diagram up above from a kind of a right to left type of direction, you know, we've started and we've done several decades now in project and portfolio management in a traditional waterfall and governance sense. And many people are doing that today. But as they move and try and say how in software development, product development, other areas to move in more agile, more iterative types of approaches and delivering, people are on these journeys to move more to that left side. Now, some folks are moving and their goal is to get to a full agile transformation where everything is done agile in an organization. But that adaptive portfolio management in the piece, which is really a blend of both the traditional and the agile pieces, could be a transitionary phase where people are in there as they're in that multi-year journey to get over to a full agile portfolio management approach. But the majority of folks we're talking to today are going to remain in an adaptive state where they know they're going to have some measure of waterfallish type of project, maybe some hybrids and some agile in the organization, and that will be their a new normal moving forward. Uh, wherever you are in this journey or wherever you land, one plan uh, has a role and a capability to support you either on that journey as you're transforming or to get you into that state where you think you're going to remain. And either way, we're going to show you some concepts today and actually demonstrate some capabilities that help you in that adaptive and in that agile use case moving forward. Now, the challenge is as you have these mixed methodologies and mixed tool sets, you know, how do you bring that all together? You know, uh, people are oftentimes, you know, doing very manual efforts to mash up data into common data sources and then transform it into usable information, whether it be in PowerPoints or some other type of reporting. The key is it has to be consolidated, translated, and rolled up to leadership. And in this view here, where we might have mixed methodologies of some Agile, some Waterfall, and maybe even different tool sets of which Azure DevOps is one of them. Some might be a Microsoft project or uh, uh, other types of Waterfall planning and Agile tools. That all then has to roll up and provide visibility up at a portfolio level uh, and maybe even align with strategy 
so that leadership can actually get visibility, see how their investments are tracking, and when they can expect things. Now, as you uh, go through this, you know, leadership has their needs to see these things at those summary levels, as well as the team still need the capabilities to execute and be able to provide that, whether it be in a hybrid methodology where you see both combinations of waterfall and agile in here, or in a more pure agile, if you do a pure, pure agile transformation, sometimes the language of business is different at the team level for agile folks than it necessarily is at leadership. You know, part of a full corporate ad, uh, agile transformation is leadership has an agile mindset when you fully get there. But perhaps leadership sometimes is still looking at traditional business metrics where the teams are looking at more agile metrics and be able to consolidate and translate when teams are looking at things like burnups and burn downs and velocity charts and cumulative flow diagrams. Uh, leadership is still looking at things like internal rate of return and net present value and return on investment necessarily, especially when you're in a transitionary state unless they fully adopt an agile mindset as well. So they have the ability to not only summarize this information, bring it together into common portfolios, but also tra translate these things into terms that our leadership wants to see. Now, customers have different perspectives and aspirations on these journeys. Now, Gartner says now that there's over 90% of enterprise companies that are using Agile in some places in some form within their organizations. Now, that may not be fully across all the things that they're doing, and those journeys can be incremental over time, but Current business challenges in PPM are things like, you know, you know, we have no portfolio reporting on the Agile stuff. Nobody can tell me when we're going to get things done. Uh, you know, we need to be able to dynamically change priorities based on data and forecasts and be able to adjust on those things at a more portfolio or global level. You know, we need what if capability uh, as situations change or as new demands come in. You know, we sometimes have to manage resource capacity and availability across all of our work across the organization and individual team uh, efforts within say Azure DevOps or other Agile tools isn't providing that necessarily. And they need to see progress against overall plans or against overall portfolio plans and be able to integrate things like Azure DevOps uh, within the mix. So these are challenges that sometimes as people are making this journey, they have to navigate these things in order to be successful and to provide the, uh, meet the expectations of leadership in their organizations. So if we're going to use Azure DevOps as a tool for software development and a software development environment and use the uh, board's capability, for example, in there to do uh, execution of agile style approaches to managing work, what else is needed? Well, what's needed is the portfolio level or portfolio management tier of capabilities to add to Azure DevOps because it really doesn't have that in a robust way. As we look here on the screen with some particular uh, screens, you know, Azure DevOps can add things like, as we're going to show you here today, our one plan capabilities that's fused right into Azure DevOps so that these capabilities can be accessed or consumed right within Azure DevOps. And whether that be uh, going from left to right, um, a more uh, list-based portfolio hierarchy that might model uh, a scaled Agile approach that you're using, uh, or whether you're using portfolio boards to do things like program increment planning, or in the middle where you're looking at, looking at portfolios and trying to reconcile them based upon your ability to deliver resources in the lower pane, or maybe looking at financial constraints and looking at how we're gonna fit these things into the budgets that have been applied to those things. The key is to be able to provide agile portfolio management, budget and resource planning, and potentially even strategic alignment uh, to those things to make sure that we're working on the right things. And these are things that are needed to complement what Azure DevOps is strong at. Now, one plan can provide that capability. It's designed to provide uh, the strategy level all the way down to the execution level, but incorporate the use of other tools. Now, this uh, diagram or graphic you see here shows a combination of waterfall and Azure DevOps or Agile types of tools that would all feed up into a common portfolio. And that's a common scenario as to why people would leverage one plan. Also, people may want to actually execute on strategies using things like an uh, objectives and key results methodology, where they can actually have strategies and tangible key results to gauge whether or not we're actually on the path to achieving the successful uh, achievement of those strategies. And potentially, as you look down below, 
uh, be able to align those things with uh, the projects and the efforts that you have going on from a project and uh, uh, um, initiative perspective down below and be able to make sure that we're working on the right things. Now, the modules we have in one plan allow you to do portfolio planning in a traditional sense with you know, lists of projects and initiatives that uh, are there with or without timelines, the ability to have boards to look at a more agile approach to this portfolio and work with it, or even roadmap views for people that are uh, oriented towards roadmaps and things that are product and release deliveries of things that they want to have, as well as being able to layer in resource capacity planning and availability, being able to layer in detailed financial planning such that they can track CapEx and OpEx, which is important to many organizations today. And then on the execution side, on the work from the bottom up, you know, either having onboard uh, planning capabilities, which might be in one plan itself, but to leverage other tools. In this case, we're gonna talk about Azure DevOps today to roll that information in through seamless integration uh, with connectors that bring that data in from individual uh, efforts that are going on within Azure DevOps, but then roll them into a complete portfolio context within one plan. And those capabilities are provided uh, by the things we're going to show you today. Now, when we talk about integrations, this is not, you know, the old way of writing, you know, one-off custom code to make the integrations happen. One plan offers the capability to productize connectors, and we have a very popular one with Azure DevOps we're going to talk to you today. So agile or software development tools, financial ERP systems, other work management tools or waterfall planning systems, et cetera, have out of the box productized connectors that allow you to make this happen and bring this together into a portfolio without you doing the data gymnastics of manually mashing this stuff up. Now, the other key piece is, is rather than just connecting the data between one plan and Azure DevOps, for example, uh, it has been designed, one plan has been designed uh, as a Microsoft Cloud solution that is built to have a fused user experience. Whether or not you're using things like Microsoft's Power Apps platform, it can be consumed that way, one plan can. It could be consumed within Dynamics. Today, we're gonna to talk about consuming one plan within Azure DevOps. Last week, we did a webinar on Habit Fused and being actually consumed within Teams as an authorized Microsoft Teams application. The key is, can we use these capabilities and have users staying working in the tools that they work in every day predominantly without having to leave those tools to get those capabilities? And we're gonna show that in Azure DevOps today with one plan. Now, the things I showed you earlier on about capabilities of one plan from the portfolio level, uh, these things can all be rendered and consumed and made available right within Azure DevOps as these screenshots will show you, as well as the execution pieces that can be uh, brought in from within um, uh, Azure DevOps or within Azure DevOps itself. So when we're talking about the capabilities of one plan, it does what it does, but we can actually make it part of the overall Azure DevOps experience for you and your users. Now, not only just making the tool set available within Azure DevOps, but we also uh, have needs to connect these things at a data level. So whether it be on a work item level that we, um, for example, extend with one plan, the ability to have things like portfolios and programs and maybe even value stream levels and you know, you know, associate these things with agile release trains. Uh, what's common maybe, maybe the work items that we want to bring over into the portfolio in one plan where in Azure DevOps, we're actually tracking things like epics and then within them features and user stories and then within those user stories, tasks and bugs that we're tracking. Now, in the scenario that we have today with our built-in integration or connector to Azure DevOps, we can actually then create a portfolio and work plan, work plan integration that, for example, may allow us to uh, initiate an epic and could be initiated on either side. In this case, it's showing it might be initiated over in one plan and then create an epic over in Azure DevOps uh, automatically. But then where the work is going to be performed by the Azure DevOps and software development teams, perhaps as they build out features and user stories and the tasks and bugs that are resultant in those things, that data will synchronize automatically back to one plan and roll up into those portfolios, programs, and epics um, so that we can actually get them uh, brought in in the context of a full portfolio set of views. So capabilities that Paul's going to show you today, just to set the stage, is that we have portfolio level capabilities with portfolio lists and timelines within Azure DevOps. 
We have portfolio prioritization that allows us to use things like a weighted shortest job first methodology and calculations to do the type of uh, uh, prioritization methods that's most appropriate for the way you want to look at the world. Portfolio boards for doing things like program increment planning. Roadmaps so that people can look at these things from a more productized roadmap or release perspective. Be able to have portfolio hierarchy so you can structure a hierarchy from a scaled agile perspective. So if you're going towards more of a lean portfolio management or a safe type of approach, those type of hierarchies that would be uh, commensurate with that are modeled in here so that your portfolio can reflect the way that you're going to do that. Now, portfolio governance and capabilities around that uh, allow you to have the data points and things for control. The ability to have status reports as a natural output of this is something that one plan delivers. The ability to have resource capacity planning consistently in this one, uh, view we have over here is in Azure DevOps it's rendered, but maybe actually planning uh, in, by teams rather than by individuals. The ability to look at resource capacity and what that means, have we overloaded specific teams? Uh, resource negotiation where if you have to get resources from other entities or say resource or functional managers in an organization be able to have that negotiation between the project or scrum masters uh, that actually have to get the resources deployed in order to work those things that negotiation is possible here and then be able to temper your portfolio of the things that you commit to doing based upon the resource capacity or availability you have so that we can actually reconcile our portfolios in uh, timing and in the scope of what we're doing with the resources that we actually do have same thing with financial planning. We can do detailed financial planning and track CapEx and OpEx and detailed time phase categories, have views in the portfolio that actually give people and leadership a sense of where we're at from a financial perspective, as well as do those what if analyses where we can reconcile uh, not only just with resources, but with the dollars that we have. And then the work plan, synchronizing with your Azure DevOps backlogs, whether or not how you structure those and have those synchronized back to one plan. And Collaboration, being able to leverage the capabilities of Microsoft Teams for things like content management, conversations and collaboration so that others in the organization that may not be working in Azure DevOps can actually get access to information with permissions to look at the things that they need to to be able to collaborate uh, that so really your stakeholders can become involved in this as well. And even time tracking, you know, even though Agile approaches don't necessarily lend themselves uh, to time tracking, organizations still need to track and find ways to do CapEx and OpEx, and they have to track detailed time somewhere. So whether it's being rendering a full timesheet like you see here in Azure DevOps, or maybe just a simple work log within your work item in Azure DevOps that's provided by one plan, gets the ability to, for uh, users to be able to comply with the organization's needs without ever having to leave Azure DevOps to do it. And then the reporting. You know, the folks that aren't hands-on in the tool sets, to be able to access Power BI reports and standard report packs uh, that give the pictures and the perspectives that you want to share with the organization or the organization feels it needs, those things are a natural output of the process and you don't have to construct these reports each and every reporting cycle as many organizations are doing today. So the message here today really is, you know, one and Azure DevOps is the, is the environment that we're focused on today is that when you incorporate one plan into the mix, you get one interface, you get one user experience, and you get that all in one plan. So one plan really is the glue that brings this all together or the hub that brings this information all together from, one, uh, from Azure DevOps and or potentially other sources as well. So with that, I wanna turn it over to Paul Estabrooks, who will give you a demonstration of how this stuff works and show you that it's live and in action for many organizations today. Thanks, Jim. Just going to change presenter. I'm going to walk through two demos today. The first one, uh, which I'm in right now, is, is going to look at this in an adaptive sense. So if you go back to some of Jim's slides with the three circles, this first one sort of resides in that middle area, that big sort of gap between pure waterfall and pure agile. And, and we're going to sort of play this adaptive scenario out here inside DevOps. And then the second one's going to be uh, lean portfolio management. And I'm going to focus that one on some specific planning and prioritization just to show how that's done using our tool. So here I am, I'm in DevOps. I've got 
uh, I've, I've opened up the backlog for the wind power team and we've got four different epics. So I wanna dive into this a little bit and I'm gonna click on this particular epic. And I wanna sort of show where, where one plan starts to integrate into this solution. So all the standard things that you can capture in DevOps, they're here for you to do, to find this epic. Underneath that, there's gonna be uh, features and user stories and, and all the things that you would normally do. But sometimes there's other data that we wanna capture at the epic level. So we've added in this button called one plan and it's gonna fire up, I'll log back in. It's gonna fire up the one plan solution. And the capabilities that I'm gonna show here are how we might define this epic. So let me just jump back to that for a second. How we might define the epic. So some other data that we might want to capture that we're gonna use in reporting and other things later. Maybe we need to associate it with strategy. Jim talked about that in one of the slides. So some objectives and key results and some other things. We're gonna define how we're gonna do time cheating. That was one of the last screenshots that Jim showed. So we'll talk about that more later. And some other information, including how this aligns to a corporate prioritization and strategy there and how we where we fit into that to create a score which we may use for some prioritization i'm going to do in a few minutes so all that sort of standard information we might want to capture about you know i'll put project in air quotes in this case an epic but then two things that a lot of clients come to us looking for in their DevOps solutions is one is how do I capture budget for this particular epic? Um, I need to participate in sort of the overall budgeting process of the organization. And I, I wanna be able to articulate this at the epic level. So here you can see we have a, I'm, I'm in the budgets page in our financials module, and I can come in and define the budget whether that's by the different roles that might fulfill on this epic in, in completing the work, likely in sprints, but I, I'm looking at this in time phase months at this point. And then some of the other costs that we might incur. Then we can do forecasting and actuals, and we can also do benefits tracking here in this, in this frame so that we can better understand how this epic fits into all the things we're trying to do as an organization uh, in this lens financially. The next one, and this is by far the most popular thing that we get asked for from a DevOps perspective, is resourcing. Yes, obviously DevOps can assign people to user stories and features and so forth and manage that, but I wanna be able to look at resource commitments across the whole organization. And in this adaptive scenario that I'm playing out, there is other work in here that isn't being managed by DevOps. Well, this is a blended environment. We're just looking at it through a DevOps lens or through that UI. So here I can articulate the roles and or people that I need on this particular initiative, uh, this epic rather, and when I need them and to the volume of which I need. So underneath this might be a series, so from May to let's say November, maybe eight or 10 sprints, maybe more. But what I'm looking at right here is not loading by sprint, but by month, because I want to be able to aggregate this and, and compare it to all the other things that we have going on. And where you see red is because this particular individual, Gavin, is over-allocated with other work. And that other work might be coming from a conventional project uh, and project methodology, or it might be coming from other epics here in DevOps. But it's telling me that, that to schedule this individual to participate in this epic and the sprints that would be underneath it, uh, it's going to be a problem because there's an overallocation. So we need to sort of rectify that. Jim talked about in his slides, you know, resource negotiation and so forth. And you could see, you know, I have proposed and committed resources on here. And I'm trying to work through that very requirement as I staff up this epic and understand how it fits with everything else we're doing. In a minute, <coughs> excuse me, in a minute, I'm going to show you how we use this data, both the financials and the resource data, to make some prioritization decisions here within the within DevOps. Lastly, on this this sort of window, I'm going to show you that we also are pulling in, as Jim showed in that mapping slide. This is the features and the user stories within this epic, and which iterations and sprints that they are in, so that we can see this data here and make some decisions while we do the detailed work over in DevOps. But I just wanted to show you that we're drawing that data in here as well to look at it and to be able to report on it if necessary. So that's the kinds of information that we wanna capture about the, the epic in this case, uh, in this particular, uh, in, in DevOps, but we're doing that inside one plan. Now, I wanna sort of take that to the next level. So I'm gonna jump into my portfolios here in one plan. 
and give myself a little bit of extra real estate and collapse that for a second. And we're going to start by looking at the overall portfolio. And again, we're in our adaptive solution, and I'm showing it through through Power or through adaptive or through Azure DevOps rather. Uh, and so I wanted to see this, but I want to show you sort of all these sort of pieces to this. You could see in here we have programs, and underneath that we have projects and epics. And the, the very epics that we're trying to plan right now. So we've drawn both in to here. And what I want to now be able to do is take the data that we were capturing when we were sorting out the support customers using mobile epic a few minutes ago. And I want to be able to use that to do some prioritization. So I'm going to just switch my view here quickly to project prioritization. And you'll see sort of a, in a second a flattened list of all the projects and epics mixed together. This is all the work that we're trying to do. I'm going to turn on prioritization. So the first thing I can do is prioritize based on that scoring that we were capturing on that detail page. How does each of these, regardless of whether they're a project or an epic here in DevOps, and perhaps they're all epics, maybe this is more uh, streamlined down to everything's being captured in DevOps, how do they rank in a prioritization model that I could then drag stuff up and down and just prioritize? Sorry, wrong thing. Whoops. Grab this, and I can move this project up and down wherever I want it to go. I'm going to put it back where it was, just so I don't mess anything else up. But I can I can do some very quick and simple prioritization that way, or I can go a layer deeper. I'm going to start with resources today. So it's going to take all that resourcing data, and this was a screenshot that that Jim showed a little while ago, and you can see how all of that maps out if we were to do everything up top. So we're in a scenario model right now. So step one. Stuff that's on hold, let's for the sake of the discussion, let's just take it out of the model and keep it on hold. And already you see this is starting to improve if you're watching that. But now I want to start at the top and potentially look at, well, I really want to do this particular one that we were working on that's a hybrid of both uh, DevOps stuff and it has some project stuff in it as well. And I want to be able to do that one. But maybe that means I can't do this one. Uh, maybe I need to stop this one. And each time you'll see it's recalculating and it's starting starting to improve this. The second piece of this is then I could start to look at this, not in a detailed schedule sense, but in a timeline sense to say, well, this this and this epic is supposed to start, you know, in April, but what if we delayed it and now it's going to recalculate? We we improved April by doing that. And I could continue to iterate through this. And it may come out that I conclude we have to hire because we're, we're not going to get some of those big negative numbers sorted out. We can't move enough stuff out. We need to do it. And it's going to educate us and inform us that we do need to add headcount as business analysts and other roles because we, we need the work to get done. And we're, this is the decision we need to make. So then I could look at this from a budget perspective. Now, I've moved some projects out. So I know my target, I'm, I'm actually below target, but again, I have the same timing problem. So I could continue to move some projects around, maybe take something else out of the mix. If I do that, uh, it's gonna recalculate the budget further and I'm getting closer, but I have budget capacity. Really what I want to be doing is moving the, the work around. So here in this, we are looking at both projects and epics within the, the DevOps environment. We're able to capture additional data that than what DevOps captures to participate in this type of prioritization exercise, both on budget or on resources or both as I've just played out here right now. By capturing that information and, and staying sort of above the fray, above the sprint planning and the rest of it to look at this sort of from beginning to end of an epic, when do we need people and what roles would we need and how does that impact across the whole organization? I'm going to end this piece of the demo by kind of going here. Jim showed the timesheet. I'm going to show my work. It's similar in nature, but I want to highlight something in this capability that we have here. So we'll let that load. Here it comes. There we go. And so as a resource, I'm logged in as Daniel in this demo. I can, from inside DevOps, I can status my backlog items. So features and user stories and whatnot that are coming from, that were created here in DevOps. I could also status some issues and risks that we were capturing in one plan. I could capture or status a task that's come in through um, some project work that I'm also involved in. So in a single pane of glass, we are able to status the work that we are doing regardless of where it came from, how it originated and what it is. 
We're not limited to simply tasks or simply to the backlog items uh, here in DevOps and have to go do the rest elsewhere. All of it is now here for us to status as necessary. Jim showed the timesheet, it's the same concept that if you needed to capture actuals and so forth, you have that capability, again, across all of these items and not simply uh, those that were created here in DevOps. Everything is here. So that's the adaptive story. I'm gonna jump over to our other, our LPM environment and walk through this just just quickly, I wanna focus on one piece of functionality. So this particular scenario is built out to follow lean portfolio management. So we have portfolios, value streams, epics, features, and stories. And if I, if I open up one of these, there you see the Fabricam value stream, underneath it you see epics, and underneath that you'll see stories across the board here. Or sorry, features rather. And underneath that you'd see user stories. So there's the full structure now what we've done in one plan, if I jumped over to the portfolio, is we've mimicked that same structure here in, in, in one plan. Here it comes, there it goes. I'm gonna open up that same one. There's Fabricam, there's the epics, and there's the features. We have not brought over user stories. The purpose being that user stories belong in, in DevOps, that's where they should be managed, that's where people should assign the work and track it and, and execute on it. We're gonna ride a layer above that here. And, and this is where we're gonna do our prioritization and our planning, and that's what I'm gonna show you in this part of the demo. But I wanted to highlight here that exact same hierarchy is here, but now what we've added to the, the, the mix is this ability to group, group by arts, group by teams, group by uh, epics, group by you know program increments, or any other metric you may have created. Likewise, you can filter by all that type of information. So we've sort of enhanced that list in DevOps by giving you these additional capabilities. But then, and this is where I want to spend uh, some time, is I'm going to go into uh, my boards. Uh, make sure I get the right one here. Oh, just hold on one second. PI planning, sorry, that's what I wanted to show. So I'm gonna walk through sort of two forms of, of board planning. First off is program increment. Ignore the dates, but we've got four program increments. They're, they're roughly a quarter of a year each. And we've set a an epic budget constraint on each one of 1.25 million. And then now we're starting to drop in our epics and I have a backlog of items that I can bring in and put in different places. My first issue I wanna resolve is the current, let's let's say we're starting the year, this first increment is overloaded and the others are, are really underloaded. So I should take this out of that one. I'm just gonna move it over to for the sake of the discussion. Now I'm aligned, I'm okay here. And then I will look to my backlog it start to move other items into these subsequent PIs. Maybe they come into here and something else goes out. As we plan out the year, these program increments, in this case, it happens to span the entire year. As we look at the big themes, the big picture, where do we want to put those things? And then underneath that, we're going to dive into a, a program increment and do some further prioritization and make sure that our teams are working properly, define the sprints and organize ourselves within that program increment. So step one in this tool is to take that information that we've captured, the stuff that was captured up in the boards and DevOps, and now start to prioritize it, start to assign it first to program increments and then later to teams and to organize for how it plays through. So what's the theme for, for program increment one? And do we have the right epics and features inside that theme to, you know, that relate to that theme to execute on what we want to accomplish in that, in that increment? Having done that, we're going to dive a layer deeper. I'm going to grab my program planning board. And here we're looking at it by team. The, the lanes here are teams. And we have sort of standard uh, agile methodology here of funnels and so forth all the way through. And what I'm looking at in this board as I plan stuff out is, is each team well organized for work? Or do they have work coming in through the funnel? And you can see that first team does not. They've got a lot going on uh, in, in implementing and validating. They're sort of pushing stuff through, but they don't have future work lined up and we need to start lining them up with some work. The network team isn't implementing anything right now, so they're stuck. So we need to get this out of backlog and get it moving and so forth. 
bike team probably need to add some things to the funnel the a team <laughs> the a team but they're not doing anything so we're going to jump to the backlog here and start moving stuff into here maybe move this over and so forth move something else in that they could start to work on and i'm just i'm grabbing items quickly because i want to get this team loaded up i want to get this funnel overall full i want to get this going Impl implementation we need to get a couple things closed here and moved on as we continue to sort of plan and work our way through managing those different teams to continually be grabbing the next item, moving it through the process, and planning at this level of detail within the current uh, program increment. So we started with the with the epics and plotted out the big picture. Where are the big themes going to be? What are we going to try and accomplish in each program increment? And now within the program increment, how are we going to take uh, these specific features and start dropping them into the respective teams where they belong and making sure that we are loading them up with with work sort of working its way through the process in an orderly fashion and that everyone's optimized across. So two different scenarios. The adaptive one looks at participating in that middle scenario that Jim talked about, gives us the ability to engage both project audiences and language, as well as stuff here from DevOps with epics and features and so forth, and bring those together and to do prioritization across everything, to look at resourcing and budgets across everything and make sure that we're aligned. In this scenario, we're following a much stricter lean portfolio management approach, and we're using the tooling here to help us do our prioritization first at the program increment level, and then diving into the program increments and setting up the sprints and how we're gonna get the teams working and moving stuff through. So two scenarios, both inside DevOps, meeting specific needs for customers, depending on where they are on that continuum, that shifting left continuum, we support both of those different scenarios. And with that, Jim, I'll call it a wrap. All right, thanks, Paul, appreciate that. Let me know when you can see uh, my screen. I can. All right, terrific. Well, thank you for that great overview on uh, both of those scenarios, both of the adaptive and the agile portfolio pieces. Um, and um, it's really adding a lot of capabilities to the strong team capabilities that are available, the team level capabilities that are in Azure DevOps. So now I'd like to summarize and maybe talk about some potential next steps uh, for you if you're interested in what you saw here today. So in summary, you know, Azure DevOps is a very popular tool for executing on Agile projects. We're seeing a lot of demand of people who are using that, uh, especially Microsoft Shops. And Azure DevOps, or ADO, provides strong tools for the team execution of those uh, Agile efforts. But organizations do need portfolio management capabilities that Azure DevOps does not provide. And one plan will add those portfolio management features that complement ADO. And one plan can either simply connect to ADO or Azure DevOps to integrate the data between them, as Paul showed at that kind of work item level. But one plan also fuses into Azure DevOps and its capabilities can be accessed while working directly in Azure DevOps, meaning the users can do it within their experience of the tool set that they typically live and work in. Um, you know, Paul showed two scenarios. Uh, but we can support a variety even beyond those two of methodologies, whether it be pure waterfall, agile, or hybrids of the two. And as he showed in the agile piece, compared with the, uh, Azure, uh, the adaptive piece, that portfolios can be hierarchically structured and associated to scale the way you want to scale. How would you like that portfolio hierarchy to be? Would it be more traditional portfolios and programs? Or do you want to have some more scaled agile type of approaches where you know, you're aligning things with things like value streams and agile release trains, uh, as well as programs and strategies. So the idea here is it, it allows you to do things the way that you feel that your organization needs to. We do these webinars all the time, and this month in September, we're really on this focus of this fused UI theme. And next week, at the same time, we're actually going to show how we can extend uh, Power Apps, and there's a project accelerator that was built in Power Apps that provides portfolio management capabilities for the Microsoft project for the web. And we're going to show how one plan extends that into robust project portfolio management within that Power Apps environment, leveraging those capabilities. Um, also, on September 30th, we're going to show how these things can be done, uh, fused into your use of SharePoint Online for your project and portfolio management work needs. So if those things are of interest to you, 
or those those are the places that you spend some time today. You're moving into Power Apps a little bit more, or you're still heavily using SharePoint Online for a lot of content and collaboration. We can show you ways that you can make that happen. Um, you can get a trial of the things you saw for one plan today. Um, now, whether it be the adaptive project and portfolio management, you go out to AppSource at Microsoft, www.appsource.com, and you can either get the adaptive project portfolio management trial, or you can get the agile portfolio management trial. We also have trials out there for strategic portfolio management, professional services automation, and even just specific use cases like resource management. So um, if you wanna go out there, uh, we are happy to support you in getting this thing set up and even chaperoning you and giving you some help in, in navigating to get the results you're looking for out of your trial. So uh, please feel free to engage us on this. As well as, if you want to understand maybe what it takes to get these things in place for your organization, we can provide you with a free roadmap workshop where we'll help review kind of like your current state and use of tools, you know, assess the requirements and desired future state you'd like to get to, and determine how you would actually go to implementing something like this and moving towards that and migrating to it. Um, and then help you see a roadmap for what the best adoption success might be and what those costs might be. And you might be surprised, you may already own a bunch of the licenses that you'd already need to do this. So we're happy to do this for you as a free service. So either whether it's a free trial or a roadmap workshop, or if you're not ready for that yet and you still wanna learn more, uh, Paul gave a great generalized demonstration today, but if you want something a little more personalized and addressing your specific needs and use cases, we're happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demonstration with you. You can reach out to us in general at contact at oneplan.ai. Check out some things at our website at www.oneplan.ai. You know, or you can reach out to Paul or myself individually. You guys will be getting a contact. Uh, 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 a copy of these slides as well as a link to a recording of this presentation today that uh, if you want to share it uh, so let us know we really do want to engage with you and help you navigate through this and see if this is a good alternative for you or a good solution for the things that you're facing in your companies um, with that we'd like to thank you for your time again today uh, one plan is invested in success and that does mean your success uh, and if we can engage with you and help you move the ball forward in these areas uh, as you go on your particular journeys, we'd love the opportunity to do so. So thank you and have a great day.